This is a HeadGum Podcast. Back on a short week, back on a Thursday, and we have NextIssue.com to thank. Gracias. A new sponsor. And we don't need to say too much about them, so let's start the show. <laughs> uh, if you guys like uh, bonus Thursday episodes and you're at your computer and you want to do a little bit to help us out, if you want to support the show, if you want to support our, support our sponsor, go to nextissue.com slash if I were you while I uh, take you through their shit. Okay, go ahead. Take right. me through it. All right. So load it up on your page, right? What you a got... magical ride we're on. <laughs> <laughs> you're Tell closing... me more, Blumenfeld. <laughs> you're closing your eyes. Uh, I'm going at the speed of data. Let me tell you the the gist here. You know how it's easier to carry around a Kindle or an iPad rather than a, a stack of books. I'm serious. A lot of kids these days are doing everything on their on their tablets, on yeah. their smartphones. That's right. I, 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 I'd like to adapt to so, that way of life. So next issue is uh, that, but for magazines. They have all the best titles, all for you. They have Bloomberg Business Week, Bon Appetit, Consumer Report, Men's Health, Parents, People, Sports Illustrated, Wired, Time Vogue. All these magazines that Tell will, me, though, do they have Men's Health? That's my favorite they do. You have men's health. You did say it, but you <laughs> sort of glossed over it. I'm sorry. And so let's say you're taking a trip, or let's say you're, let's say you're, you're taking a dump. Yeah, let's say you're at home and you don't want to stack a mags. Because mm-hmm. stack a mags, that's a waste of paper. That's a waste of money, which is also a waste of paper because you're spending cash or perhaps a digital currency. Wow. And if you're talking about digital currency, can I recommend starting a free trial of nextissue.com? Go to nextissue.com slash if I were you to start your free trial. It's a smart, uh, more. I mean, it's 2015. You don't have to carry on a stack of we magazines. We like magazines. Everybody likes magazines, but nobody likes to buy a bunch of magazines. You're not going to go on a flight and buy 19 magazines. Yeah, you don't want to be that guy. No. Um, but there's, it's more than just reading magazines on your phone and iPad. It's, uh, it's a great. They have search, so you can search across multiple magazines. So let's say I sh- oh, search. Oh, that's actually really dope. Right, and then it not only searches across multiple magazines, but it searches across uh, uh, several years. What? Yeah, yeah. What's the other, when you subscribe to a magazine, you get like all of the back issues, right? Exactly. Up to like 2012 or something. Right? Yeah. So you can see old magazines, new magazines, so uh, don't a wide variety. Spend your money on a subscription of like outside magazine or Men's Health when you can do this, and then you get all the old issues and the new issues. That's right. Plans start as low That's as really- nine ninety nine a month or fifth uh, fourteen ninety nine a month for a premium. Uh, but you can, what's, like we said, start your free trial. If you go to nextissue.com slash if I were you, just go to nextissue.com slash if are you to, uh, to support us. And then you can make your own decision. We're not trying to pressure you into buying anything, right? I am. Bat. Oh. Venmo me. <laughs> you want cash directly. I want cash directly. Uh, it is a new sponsor. So they are, they are tracking how many viewers we can send them. That's nextissue.com. Slash if I were you, all one word. Uh, thank you, Next Issue, for trusting us not to mess up this ad read. Thank you, you guys, for supporting our show. Uh, thanks for listening on a Thursday, uh, whether it is a Thursday or not. We do appreciate it. We do, uh, uh, we say namaste, we say gracias, we say toda raba, and we say let's start this episode. Things things actually did get real. Mm-hmm. You said, remember, this is when I yelled at you, and you, you said you yeah, felt you, uncomfortable. You yelled at me. Yeah. You, 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 you I went too hard. Too hard. Yeah. <laughs> so enjoy that. Well, if you made a mistake, or if you're in a rough place, just write an email to Amir and Jay. Because with Amir and Jay, your anonymity say. The problems are real, but their names are fake. If I were you, the podcast show, and you always know, it's hashtag dope. Jake and Amir, they make the answer clear, and you always know. That was a really fucking cool song. I did it. <laughs> you pressed play. You didn't do it. I anything. wrote it. No, you didn't. I wrote it, and I did it, and I performed it. You barely it. know how to talk <laughs> in your breath. <laughs> I could talk. <laughs> okay, fine. Gus Rachels did it. 
and his music can be streamed, purchased, or downloaded at gusrachels.bandcamp.com. Gus I guess Rachels. between those options, I would choose downloaded, then streamed, and then lastly, purchased, uh, if, if I had the same option for every song. Uh, I guess some of them can only be purchased, some of them can only be streamed, and some of them can only be downloaded. Uh, as a, like, let's say you, there was an MP3, and it says, would you like to stream, download, or purchase this? You would download it? Yeah, I would download it. Then it's on my computer. Then I have it forever. Yeah, then you have to... Exactly. You have it forever. Why would you want that? What are you talking about? I want to hear the song, and I want to have it. And then what if I like the song? Then I have to go back and stream it again. You can stream it any time. You're averse. You really are averse to having shit. Yeah. That's... That's a. I think it's a negative. I think it's not like a a, a cute little quirky preference. No. I, th- I think I think it's actually detrimental. No. Yeah. You say you say having shit stresses you out. What, what do I What do I need that I don't have? You don't. You. I don't think you understand what stress means. Like stress is like when shit's going poorly, and you think that having books stresses you out like why is that stressful why are you stressed out by books? With a lot of hate right no now. i'm you serious i want to wanna know like you have to downloading thing is bad having stuff is bad i have eight shirts they're all hung up is having you, a, is having an opinion bad blue <laughs> no i'm just saying well, that so I, i've got one do you do you have you have an it's opinion not on an my opinion. opinion it's not an opinion sure it's an opinion that i don't like to have things yeah but it, it affects not only yourself but other people around you in what way does it affect anybody around me because you get stressed out quote unquote stressed out like let's say i i i leave a dish on the counter or i'm given a gift and i leave it out on the kitchen you think that stresses you out i had tupperware uh I did think, the it, sink. it doesn't stress me out it stresses you out you say having stuff stresses me out would you say it stresses you out I didn't know. I don't think that you having Tupperware on the <laughs> counter stresses me out. I like to put it away. But having stuff over here, you said stressed you out. Yeah, you, when you have stuff here, you, you say it's stre- right you now. say you get stressed out by having things around clutter. You, does that not stress you out? I don't like clutter. Did yeah. you think it stresses you out? Have you ever said something like that stresses you yeah, out? Of course, clutter stresses me out. So why does it stress you out? Where does the stress come from? I don't like to look at it. <laughs> Oh my God! You don't like to look at it. What is happening right now? <laughs> this is insane. I mean, you are you guys to listening out. to this thing? You gotta chill out. You're. I think you're putting yourself on blast by having this attitude. How am I putting myself on blast? You're coming. You're coming across <laughs> bad on the podcast right now. Thanks, Gus Rachel's for sending that in. Uh, Gus Rachel's dot again. Uh, what is this? an advice podcast or is it a public shaming <laughs> of me forum actually today's episode you had this idea which is kind of stays in tune with this decluttering theme instead of scientifically methodically going through our favorite questions in our email we're just going to try to unclutter our inbox and get through as many as we can this is probably our first lightning round edition of the show these are questions we haven't read before but These it gives are, you a good example of what types of questions we're starting we get. with. Question one: the most recent. Oh, from the beginning? No, no. I think the most recent. That's like the most recent one that's come in. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, starting from the top. Right now, we're here. Uh, these questions might not be great. Because we haven't read them yet. This is an experiment. It's a social experiment. But this is a bonus Thursday episode, so it's kind of like, you know, a little a little different, a little wacky. And hey, what if it goes well? We could do it again. This is episode 169. Maybe we could do it every perfect square. So like 13 squared is 169, and then 14 squared. Of course. Obviously. Uh, all right. Should we get started? Yeah. Shit really stresses you out. You have to relax about that shit. Dear media moguls. You get a gift. <laughs> if I have a gift and I leave it on the counter. Yeah. I think that's not okay that you have it there. <laughs> what gift? I don't know. You mentioned a gift that you would have on the counter. <laughs> I guess why is it on the counter? Uh, because I left it out. I didn't want to put it in a cupboard. You put it in a cupboard. I don't know where that gift is. What gift? Uh... We were given alcohol. Yeah, I put it. 
I put it in the cupboard so it didn't get <laughs> stolen at the party. It was expensive alcohol. Well, what about um, um, bags? I, I had a I had a tote bag that I wanted to go to Gelson's and, and shop with a tote bag. I put it in the tote bag drawer. I don't know what the tote bag drawer is. So ask me. It doesn't but you weren't the here. The counter. You weren't here because you took it away. You put it in the tote bag drawer. I don't know what's the tote bag drawer. You organized the whole fucking kitchen. I can't tell what the is tote bag drawer is. Is that a problem is. that I organized the kitchen? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a problem that I wasn't included in the organization. Suddenly, I can't you find uh, there's shit. no way on earth you want to be. Do we have a corkscrew? No, we don't have a corkscrew. See, I didn't know that because you maybe you put. Am it I in away. charge of a corkscrew? I guess so. Are you in charge of everything? Where's my Tupperware? I put it in the cabinet. Tupperware the drawer, of yeah. There's the Tupperware. But I don't know drawer. what the Tupperware drawer is. Well, that's because you're to you the counter is a drawer. <laughs> <laughs> we just read an email verbatim, and that's what it was. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dear media moguls, he's probably referencing our new podcast network, HeadGum.com. HeadGum.com, new podcasts every day. Very to that. A good friend of mine recently broke up with his girlfriend of one year. I found out after the breakup that around three months into the relationship, she told him she cheated on him, and then she made it up to him just to hurt him. It's hard to know which is the truth and which is more fucked up. He managed to look past it for nine more months, but eventually started having doubts. And a recent vacation, on a recent vacation, the two of them went on was the final straw. However, despite plenty of sage advice to give it time and attempts to steer him away, he's looking certain to get back with her only after a few weeks. My question is, can I be cold towards her because I hate the way she's treated him? Or does my allegiance to my friend mean I should be happy if he's happy? Side notes, in about a month, him and I are heading off to Europe to travel, and I think he should be single for this and live it up. Thanks. Ooh, not, a, not a bad a random question. Have, yeah, we could have chosen that one. Yeah. Uh, the basic gist is, if somebody is mean to your friend, do you get to be mean to them if they get back together? Or, like, yeah, do you have to... I feel like this is a very common question we have coming into the podcast that you like don't like your girl don't like your friend's girlfriend or boyfriend you know it's hard it's like the breakup and then like yeah fuck that girl you can do so much better oh, she actually, actually getting back good. together are you she's cool. she's not actually when i said that when yeah. i said that i was uh, lying to make you feel better but now sure. that you guys are back together i still like you well actually we we're going through a rough patch oh uh, yeah fuck her dude you could do so much better than her but i really want to be with her and i think you should too <laughs> uh what's have you ever hated your friend's lady friend uh, I don't think I've ever hated somebody's lady friend. I've definitely like. I guess you couldn't. I. Uh, it's really weird to have a super strong opinion when you're not in the relationship. I think it's easy to like really miss a friend and feel like your friend's not being themselves because of their significant other. But I also think that there's never, there's not really much you can do because hmm. like if somebody says to you like hey you're not cool i don't like your girlfriend you she's making you act dumb like that person sort of fortifies themselves with the girlfriend then it becomes like me and my relationship against the world you don't want that so what's the what should this guy do can i be cold towards her because i hate the way she's treated him i don't think that you your first order of business is to make sure your friend is comfortable so if you're cold towards her then that like it's basically just forcing him into yeah. a fight with her and then, and then it's going to be weird around your friend you. because he'll, yeah. What you can do is be super nice and cordial towards her in public and then privately say, like, I don't like the way she's treating you. That yeah. way it's sort of giving your friend this inner turmoil that he doesn't have to deal with well, his lady friend too. for. I think you're, like, you don't have to be super nice to her, but you're, court, you're just, like, fine with her. Don't make her feel like you hate her. And then whenever your friend is, like, complaining about her, just... You know, inject. You got it. Positive reinforcement. That's what I always go back to. I think the side note is really telling, where he's like, "Him and I are heading off to travel in Europe, and yeah, I think that's he should be single." What it is? Yeah, he's like, and he should be single because yeah, traveling. Especially this girlfriend. Wait, she lied and said that she. Che I've never heard of that before. What is it? She said she, she, she cheated said on she him. She cheated and on him, but it wasn't even true. And she made it up just to, yeah, that is the liest lie of all time. I feel like she did cheat on him. <laughs> even if she didn't, like, lying <laughs> like, about that is almost just as bad. It's like, oh, so you're just fucking really messed up. Yeah, that's really Cheating funny. makes sense because it's fun to that's have sex. Addictive. What you did was just tell this really global-esque lie where you wanted to test it, me in some weird quite way. quite local, quite global. Actually, Wolf does this shit. 
he'll be like, I'm cheating on you. And then he'll be like, mm-hmm. gotcha. So like this girl just feels this yeah. flood of emotion and relief. Wolf will like ask a girlfriend that he's been with for years to, to enter into an open relationship uh-huh. and he'll <laughs> never, ever, ever stray from it. <laughs> like he will never, ever cheat on her. He'll be good to her. So it's just but like, he'll, yeah, he just, there'll be some nights where he won't come home and he wants her to think right that she, that he's met somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up it's it is not legal though or sorry not illegal i should not, say yeah. uh all right next question uh by the way this is if i were you the only advice podcast on the internet hosted by me and jake i'm amir i'm jake <laughs> obviously um if you have your own questions or theme song submissions send it to if i were you show at gmail.com much like the kind this guy sent um should we give this a fake name if he, yeah, if he needs a name. Ooh, Dade. 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 Dade right. County. All right, so one of my best friends used to bang this girl who's now in college. Should we say their names? Mm, I guess I'll bleep it out. All right. And they used to date, I guess, but they had a fight recently, so they broke up, and now she wants to fuck me? She's in the range of 5.75 to 6.25, so it's not exactly what I'm wanting to bang. But he was always bragging about how he fucked her. But now I can, uh, I can too and show him that it's not that big of a deal because she's not that hot. My friends say I'm a solid 7.5. Some <laughs> even say 8, which I agree with, of course. Ha ha. And. <laughs> He's like a point or two below me, so I wouldn't consider this a massive achievement because she'd be my first kill. <laughs> what does that mean? He's a virgin. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> After bragging so much, he's like, by the way, I've never slept with anybody. <laughs> he says, I don't want to make her my first because she was already with him. So what do I do? Bang her and tell him pl- tell him plus all our friends in our group who might find it gross do i fuck her and don't tell any icy probably anybody but they'll all stink other they'll all still think i'm a virgin for longer than i actually was if there's any way of dealing with this that i can get some pussy or some sloppy toppy please let me know asap because she's tired of waiting to get fucked and i don't want to miss out if i can thanks dade Another question we probably might have answered anyway. Yeah, I would have definitely answered this question. Two for two. Dade, you are bad. He talks so he's casually. A not good. He's a naughty. He's a not good man. The way he's talking is like he slept with 400 girls. Like, should I bang this girl? Or should I find her a five she's and a I'm five. a seven? I want to bang her so she knows her. she's not that hot. The thing is, I'm sort of a, I've, I'm a virgin, so yeah. I've never slept with you anybody. Also don't like her and you just want to fuck her so you could throw it in your friend's face. That would be a reason not to have sex with her because she's your friend's ex. <laughs> Have you ever slept with a friend's ex? Mm, not that I can think of. Oh, that's another gap in your sex uh, history. Yeah. That I, and a married woman. <laughs> yeah. Those oh two my. white whales. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, I, I might have done something like somebody that they were like really casually dating or something, but nothing like uh, so-and-so broke up and I stepped in. That seems really exciting and forbidden a friend's ex-girlfriend i guess Definitely. almost as much as not as not not as much but as see i can imagine him wanting girlfriend. to do it if he if he was like he's not even attracted to her he only wants to do it because she wants to and because he wants to show his friend that it's easy to have sex with her though he's also a like, he's not a i love that he's like I'm all of my friends say I'm a 7.5. <laughs> like that's not that good. Some even say an 8. So Which he's like I agree pulled. With. Yeah. So he agrees with the 8, not the 7.5. He's actually a the only friend that said 7. 8. Solid 7.5. It's a half. Good. Can you be a solid half? <laughs> is it a half in between? Yeah, half by you definition. You have to be a solid, is not solid 7, 8 or 9. Yeah. <laughs> you're uh, you're actually a soft 8. I'm a rock hard 7.7856. There's oh. no shaking me off that solid no. whole score. Dave, you are a zero. That's the real number. So what do I do? Uh, I guess leave her alone. Don't yeah. turn her into some sort of sex puppet of yours that you can that you can brag about. Especially if it's not, if it's your first one. Like that should be a little bit more special than yeah. some sort of revenge thing. Your first time should not be a revenge porn of itself. Um. Yeah. All right. 
Moving on. All right. Uh, do you have a fake name for this guy? Dard. Dard writes, so back in college, I made a bunch of friends for the past six years, three in college and three years after graduation. We've been the best of friends. We spend all the holidays together and even go on elaborate vacations as a group. But now I'm having an issue. We're all busy with our careers and seem distant. We barely see each other anymore. And when we get in group messages, everybody is pissy and reads the sarcasm or jokes in the messages wrong. It's becoming a problem. The last time we all hung out, everyone was so into their own world, new girlfriends, jobs, family, that we all just kind of left not really feeling it. It's so strange because we were the best of friends for so long and now we act like strangers or forced friends even though we still live in the same college town. What should I do? I have a few work friends, but no one I can really spend a lot of time with outside the office. I commute an hour each way to work, so I only really have weekends and nights free. If I was to try and meet new friends, where do I start? Thanks. So I think this is a good example of one that we wouldn't necessarily answer. Because it's like... This guy's just describing life. Yeah. I right. had these friends six years ago, and we're actually growing apart. And now I don't know how to meet new friends. Yeah. I guess I also don't hang out with the friends that I hung out with uh, every day in college. That's what happens. You grow right. apart. Yeah. Uh, if I was to try and meet new friends, I would say you should. Where do I even start? I don't know. Where works do you meet good, pretty, Works good. We made a lot of friends at work. Yeah. I feel like you should take those sort of work friends and make them your for real work friends and then make them friends. But the what we do is we work in comedy, so everyone is at the very least funny. Imagine if we just worked at like a potato chip factory. Right. Maybe there might not be a lot of friends there. I'm sure there's a funny guy at the potato chip factory. It's a silly place to work. Yeah, I can imagine it's maybe like zany. the Pringles logo or something. Yeah. Be friends with the Pringles man. That's funny. He's got a silly little mustache and he looks like he's dead. <laughs> Do you think Matt Damon, he says, P.S., do you think Matt Damon has ever been driving and saw a black car that makes it look like a cop so he slows down? But then when he gets closer, he realizes it's just a normal car and he with feels like, foolish for being a extra cautious. On it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. I don't think Damon gets Matt pulled Damon over. always goes 5 to 10 miles per hour over the speed limit. The Can you imagine speed. pulling over Damon and Damon being like giving a shit? Like, yeah. look who you pulled over. This is a fun story they for you They ask for his license. Yeah, like, that's right. Matthew Robert Damon, motherfucker. <laughs> That's my license. Is that his middle name? No, I don't know. Look up what his middle name is. What do you think it is? I think it's probably a first name like that. Well, yeah, like uh, uh, Matthew Daniel David. Wow. Damon. Matthew Page Damon. Wow. It's a last name. Mm. Seems like one of those mom's maiden name situation. MPD. Oh, actually, there's a news story about Damon in the Daily Mail. Ooh. Matt Damon and wife Luciano head out for a romantic dinner as they approach 10-year anniversary. Of course. They were, at, they were at Brentwood's fancy steakhouse. So, And he is wearing glasses, by the way. Wow. Did you ever get your glasses yet? No, they're on their way. So just know that you can still be Damon-esque and still not have perfect vision. That's all that matters. I wonder what he ordered. Steak. <laughs> <laughs> and how did he take it? However the chef prepares it. <laughs> <laughs> did he say that or did he just he guess says what does the do chef it? recommend and then they say medium rare and then he considers that for a second because <laughs> he doesn't want to just blindly take the chef's recommendation so he right. goes into his own head he's like does that check with what i desired and then he nods and he says i'll take it medium rare you think damon ever got salmon at a steak restaurant do you think damon's ever gotten food poisoning <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine a, a bacteria so dangerous that it it incapacitated Damon. Yeah, right. For four weeks, he was just hunched over a toilet, vomiting and diarrheaing. Yeah, no, he's never had a not solid shit, I don't think. Uh, new friends. How about this for an idea? You pick a hobby. Let's say I like watching football. Mm -hmm. I go to a sports bar. That's kind of weird. I'm not going to go to a sports bar by myself right. and start making friends. You play a pickup basketball game or something. That's true. Playing sports. Pick up basketball. But then you have to be invited to the game. Actually, you can arrive. I thought the whole point of pickup was that you'd like kind of just be chilling on the sidelines and hop yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's tough. It's a real uphill battle to start from zero, but I think that is that is how you do it. You got to... But I will say that new friends are more exciting because it's like, oh, these these are people that I align with myself with right now. So like, rather than friends that are six yeah. years old, it's like, oh, uh, we've drifted apart a little bit. Our friend Stacy was a brand new friend that I met at the gym. Right. Uh, that's a hobby. Hobby. I went rock climbing. Stacy was there. We still hang out with Stacy. 
Year Friendship later. solved. Mm-hmm. There you go. Be friends with Stacy. <laughs> That's a very specific thing. Uh, all right. Girl's name. Stacy. Stacy writes, I recently broke up with my girlfriend mm. before summer as she p- had planned on accepting an offer to an out-of-state college. Over the summer, we hooked up a little as feelings were still there and she was still at home. We even went to a concert together. But recently, it turns out she decided against going to that college and will be staying at home to help her mom out as her parents just separated. Obviously, we would be getting back together, right? Well, it turns out that the whole reason she wanted to go out of state was to be with some other guy that she had been thinking about this whole time. I think she's just romanticizing this guy and doesn't realize that we already make a great realistic couple. What do you guys think I should do? This isn't, this is a good example of like, it, what do you mean what you think you should do? You think you're getting broken up with. What do I think you should do? Uh, I think she's just romanticizing this guy. (laughs) We know what you think. (laughs) Of course you think that. Yes, you've made you've made this opinion to protect yourself, haven't you? You've created a nice little reality of your girlfriend doesn't (laughs) like this other guy. But they like you. What do you think I should do? I think we're already a good couple. <laughs> I guess you the- do, and your girlfriend doesn't. <laughs> it takes two to really make the relationship work. Mm. Like one person can't be down, and the other person sort of half-assing. Yeah, even it. if like you're so down, that's yeah. If it's she's not, not down, then it's still yeah. It's got to be pretty. It can't dip below it's like the mutual. Yeah, it's got to it's got to stay above like everyone's at least eighty percent down. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what do, what do we think you should do? I guess we sh- we think you should maybe uh, accept the fact that this lady doesn't really want to be with you. Yeah, all she... you can do is look good uh, in hindsight at this point. You are being broken up with. Mm-hmm. It is over, uh-huh. and this person is either going to break up with you and be like, you know what. Stacy took it really well. Right. Or she's going to break up with you and be like, you know what? I'm really glad I broke up with Stacy. She really flew off the handle there at the end. If I, if I had a girlfriend who was down to move cities to be with another guy, I think I'd be offended to the point where I wouldn't want to be with her anymore. Yeah, that's another <laughs> thing to consider. I'd be like, hey. But it's hard because you're like this. Stacy's obviously hurt by it. You're feeling a little vulnerable. You're just like, I just want things to go back to normal. I want things to be how they were. I want yeah. you to like me as much as I like you. But. Yeah, maybe try to channel some of that anger. Some of that, you know, not in a bad way, but just be like, channel some of the pride. That's what you should have. Mm. Like, I don't want to be with somebody who doesn't want to be with me. So, right. Game over. Goodbye. Uh, cool. Holy shit. Should we take a break? Is it time? Yeah, let's take a break right now and answer as many questions as we can. On the other side of this commercial pause, I meant pause. Mm-hmm. Hey, Jake, what's your credit score? Uh, I don't know what it is at the moment, but it's about, it's like 780 something. That's really excellent. Yeah, I know. Mine is a 777 because, uh, I'm feeling lucky and that's like that slot machine shit that they don't yeah. teach you about. You it. also forgot to pl- pay an electric yeah. bill <laughs> in 1998. <laughs> so, yeah. And I've been working on my shit ever since. Your credit score is your most important number in your life. You got that? It has a huge impact on your shit, whether you want to open any, like a new bank account or take out a loan or, or do any of this stuff. Uh, with Credit Karma, you can see your credit score right now for absolutely free. It's hard to tell what, you, what your credit score is, or at least it was before yeah. Credit Karma came it around. It was really shady. You'd have to go to like freecreditreport.com or something. Yeah. And, like, there's 19 pop-ups, and they want you to put your social security <laughs> number in one of them. And finally, there's a clean, nice website that doesn't make you feel scummy when you use it. So that's Credit Karma. We used it. There's a website and there's an app. We used Had- it before they paid us that's right. to get that apartment in uh, what was it? Hancock Park. Yeah. R.I.P. Uh, just text. Oh, if you want the app, just text, if I were you, that's one word, if I were you, uh, to 89800 to download the free Credit Karma app and get started. So you text, if I were you, to 89088. They send you a link, you download it, and then you put in some information, and it spits out not only your credit score, but it tells you why you have your credit score and ways to improve your credit score. I'll take it. So if you're feeling especially proactive and a little bit bored today, why don't you check out what your credit score is? It, I think it's at 1 through 850. Yeah. You got to be curious. There's a ranking you out there about because if you have, if you have bad credit, then you have to start building it, and you have to be like kind of active in building it. Yeah. So if you're curious, if, if you're like, oh, maybe it, maybe it's fine, 
definitely check because yeah. you, you know you're su- you'll be surprised to find out the things that affect your credit. And it is indeed free. So one last time, if you want to check your credit today, we highly recommend Credit Karma. Text if I were you to eight nine eight zero zero to download the free app, so you can see what the most important number is in your life. Uh, thanks, guys. Let's get back to the show. Peace. Time to read the question. Okay. Buddy. <laughs> uh, another your dude. Another dude. Uh, dwa, dwa, Dwyer. <laughs> How do you spell that? D W Y R E. Oh, R E. Dwyer. Dwyer writes, hey dudes, I've got an issue and I want to know if you can shed some heavenly wisdom on the matter. And this, like all great problems of the modern age, centers around pubic hair. I, like most men, find a natural and unshaven bush to be inconvenient, uncomfortable, and all around kind of gross. So I like to keep it clean down there and I pride myself in the ability to keep a nice, short, neat cut. In the wee days of my youth, I was leaning, uh, learning the fine art of pube shaving, and, of course, I had my fair share of run-ins with ingrown hairs. Most of them went away after a couple days, and since I've figured out how to avoid them and still stay nearly bare. Unfortunately, I have one lasting mark from my inexperienced days. There's a purple mark that's been there for over a year, which I presume to be a scar from an infected grown hair ingrown hair right in the middle of my pubic area. I swear it's like a goddamn grape on my junk and it can't be ignored. So my main concern is girls thinking it's an STD and it's affecting my game. Right now I'm still in high school and still with my first girlfriend so she knows it's not an STD. I'm just worried about college when I presumably will be smashing every night. Will girls be put off by this unholy monstrosity? Is there any way to cover it up? Will a seemingly absent and uncaring God have a change of heart and have pity on me and cleanse me of this score that I've been consuming my psyche as of late. I would really like you two to weigh in on this issue as it's a big fucking deal. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Keep it up. Seize the cheese. Keep doing you. Ta-da. Another pretty good question. Yeah, not necessarily a big deal. Uh, I wonder if there's a way to get rid of it if you went to a doctor. It seems like he's trying to avoid the medical opinion. Yeah, I, I mean, are we it the might first... be too late because if it's a scar, it's a scar. But like, but a scar definitely... the size of a grape? Yeah, that's the thing that made me look like if it's yo know, if it's like the size and shape of a grape, uh, it yeah, look at get it looked at. Yeah. That sounds not good. Maybe you can lance it and make some sort of wine out of it, like Ooh, a, a shot Jesus, of a shot of wine, a pus so wine. Foul, Have you ever had pus wine where you lance a grape sized uh, oh, boil on your body? Picturing you like kneeling down and having it <laughs> pop it into your mouth. I yeah, I uh, this question I really just think about like. How funny is it that he's just got a girlfriend? You're just, like in high school, you really are just like. Well, I know this won't be the one forever, so yeah. I'll be having sex with other people <laughs> in a year. Now, when we get into relationships, it's like, is this person the one? Right. Is, I have to. Be, I have to have a child soon. So yeah. if this girl's down to ignore the grape size boil, maybe I should just lock it down. This girl's being so like nice and accommodating, and he's just like. This flavor of the week is down to fuck me regardless, but I'm worried about she like knows the next my shit. What if I can upgrade? Can you maybe just grow your pubes a little bit longer to cover up the thing? You don't oh. have to. He doesn't have to have them so neat and trim that you can see his pelvis. Yeah, you don't need to keep it like straight bare down there. Like you can have a little a little growth that can still be neat. And Dave a nice Rosenberg tr- does scorched earth. Oh, he does he like. His. I don't like that idea. Yeah, I don't know if he still does it, but he used to just do, have scorched earth. Like, like that shaved it every. <laughs> single day yeah like what are you like working at a, a job at nasa or something that you can't even have stubble i don't understand Ugh. it's the same like uh, for, for whatever reason like shaving my legs also kind of grosses me out like for me to have smooth legs but kinda, you still do it yes i will still do it obviously i wax every other day but like it's not like a daily wax shave requirement <laughs> uh would you ever shave your legs like would that gross you out if i paid you a thousand dollars would you shave your legs uh i guess for a thousand dollars probably i might do that Pay me a thousand dollars. Yeah, to shave your legs. Sure. Maybe that could be like a funny podcast. Yeah. So I'll pay you a thousand dollars and you'd shave them. Yeah. <laughs> what about your arms? Sure. For a thousand dollars, is that another thousand? I'm not going to shave no, no, no. arms and legs for a thousand. You wouldn't do that. No. If I gave you a thousand dollars, twenty five hundred gets the full body. So what? Fifteen hundred dollars for your arms? No, just thousand for you know one or one. What if I say uh, that? 
is sort of your way of uh, decluttering your body. Suddenly you want to do it, right? Mm. You piece I'm of picking shit. them out with my teeth. <laughs> um, so what should this guy do? Mm. I think go to a doctor to make sure that there's... It's not nothing. removable. Yeah, because if it's... I don't know. Maybe it's not supposed to be there if it's the size of a grape. Uh, and then there might be like some kind of ointment. Like when you get stitches or something, they give you ointment to make sure there's not a scar. It mm. might be too late for stuff like that, but you can try that. And then barring both of those things, I think just grow your pubes out just a little bit more. Oh. And then that should cover it up. Boom. Three options, dude. What more do you want? Multiple choice. Ooh, another lady. Another lady question. Because this is ladies' Night. question. Uh-huh. And I'm feeling yeah. mentions. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a girl's name? Lacey. Wow. Okay, so one of my best friends is a dude. We've been friends for almost four years, and like the weird instant best friendship that just happens type of thing. But it's always been a bit more than just friendship. We've hooked up quite a bit over the past few years, but never dated. We tell each other we love one another all the time and have dated a handful of other people while this friendship has gone on. And it's always been weirdly misleading because it'll feel like we're dating, but then a few weeks later, one of us will be dating someone else. I just don't know if it's just me feeling like we should have been dating this whole time or if the timing not working out was a good uh, was good because we could still keep our great friendship going. It also doesn't help that all our friends ask me why we aren't just dating. We graduated from college about a month ago and now live uh, in cities a few hours away from each other. He's come to visit already and stayed with me, and it was awesome but a little too couple for us to be just friends. I don't know what to say or if I should say anything because honestly, no matter what, we'll always still be friends. I think him and I have just gone through a lot of weird uncertainty that we should both get some clarity, but I have no idea what to say or where to start. Any advice or insight would be greatly appreciated. He also listens to the show, so we'll see if he picks up on it. I think I think he'll get yeah. it based on the context <laughs> clues that I you're think heard. So. Uh, thanks for the read. Hope to hear back from you. Hugs and high fives, Lacey. Lacey, nice memory. Um, hum, hum. Uh, it seems like both of you might be thinking about this, and it, 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 this is like one of those relationships where there's this elephant in the room and it's lasted for four years. I feel like you guys have to have one epic conversation. Yeah, I think you deserve it. He probably feels like it's coming and it'll be cathartic to have a conversation. I don't even know. He might, he might not see it coming and he'll just hope that maybe he's like a dude where he's like, I don't know, I'll hook up with her and I'll see another girl and then I'll want to do this. Why do we have to talk about it? Like, yeah, why do we have he's to having, it? It's a dream situation for him. Yeah, he seems to be, it's like, seem, it's borderline an open relationship. For both of you guys. Maybe don't fuck with it. It's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, you guys are best friends and you get to hook up and then you sometimes hook up with other people, but you're always going to be best friends. By the way, that's not true. You won't always be best friends. I feel like once you start defining the shit and then like well, you guys either yeah. go for it or then break up like officially, I don't think you can just go back to status quo. Yeah, probably not. But this is probably not sustainable forever. Mm -hmm. I would say have the conversation and it, it, it should, it can even be as like, uh, on the nose as, Hey, uh, we should talk. Right. And then he, I think he'll know what that means. Nice idea. Like, oh, uh, we've sort of been dating and hooking up and friends for four years. Do you, what just, do you want to talk about? Uh, what what could we, it possibly be? <laughs> what are we? As soon as you say we should talk, he'll probably just be like, yeah, you're right. But like, you think he'll go for it? Like, you guys should either, right now you're sort of in this gray area. I think you should choose uh, one way or the other. I feel like you guys are going to talk and be like, I don't want to mess with our friendship. So you're not going to go out. And then you're not going to stop hooking up. You could talk about it, but you'll end up doing the same thing is my theory. Which is just hooking up. Yeah. I guess the real question is, what does she want? Yeah. What do you think this girl wants? Idea? Does she? All you want is to define it either way. Then, then say you're in an open relationship. Yeah. Or if you want to go for it, if you want to date him. Then you have to say that because then that changes everything. <gasps> or you could just stay friends. So step number one is more. decide what you want. Step number two is have a conversation. And if what he wants doesn't match up with what you want, then maybe, maybe should I go out with her? Is that crazy? She does. You just. She's like. Just graduated college and she's yeah. like casual about sex. Yeah. So, yeah, so like she she's, perfect. she's, yeah, she's probably hot because she's 
22 to 23. And her like, name is that's Lacey, what, and that's like a hot name. Yeah, even if it's not her actual name, the fact that that's the name we gave her is actually pretty yeah. hot. So like I have, so now I have a hot girl, and this fucking right. guy. You're a been, solid 7.5. Who's been hooking up with her is starting to this encroach on my shit. This casts a no way. Nice. Thank you. Uh, all right, have a conversation. Uh, all right, next email. Uh, hi. It's Adam. I just started using Next Plus for my phone calls. My new number, number is... <laughs> it's just an ad. Oh. Uh, it says, I've been using Next Plus for my phone call messages. This is my mobile number. Don't download, give them free space. Yeah, download this to Fuck your mobile this, device. Who are they? Um, Don't even say their name again. All right. Talk to you soon. Um, oh. Oh. This is just a follow-up email. Let's see if this... Okay, here we go. Uh, this guy appears to be foreign. He appears to be either Danish or Swedish or something. Same thing. Uh, there's lots of vowels that I'm not really sure what they are in his name. So maybe you can give up a, a fake, uh, interesting uh, European name to give this guy. Oh, yeah. Um, First and last, ideally. Uh, Sasha. Uh-huh. Uh, Sasha Uzfalafa. Uz, Uz, Uz Oh, yeah, that's good. Sasha Usfalafa writes, So traipsing around on Omegle with interests such as relationship, like the lonely-ass 15-year-old I am, and I find this hot 22-year-old girl who was a goddamn dime piece by happenstance. After a bit of chatting, she said she was turned on by me and wanted to make me come. <laughs> After a good hard dicking of 30 minutes, I hadn't come yet. I'm writing an hour after this embarrassment when she said she was going to bed. How the hell can I come faster? Was I too nervous? And then in a follow-up email, P.S. I knew she wasn't some stripper or bot or some shit because she gave me like five pics and a vid for free and didn't ever redirect me to some website. You're mad because you couldn't come in a chat? Why did you tell her? Because <laughs> it's a video. I think Omega was video. But he says that he knows it wasn't a bot because she sent him pics. Yeah. Oh. So maybe it was just text. It's an Omega chat. Yeah, you're right. And okay. he's jerking off so hard he can't come. And he told the bot and then she went to bed. Maybe he told her she did. But now he's wondering, how the hell can I come faster? Which is a new type of question. Yeah. How do I come faster? I feel like... I think you have to just do it less. Yeah, when you're jerking off, it, I don't know, it really shouldn't be hard to make yourself come from masturbating. Unless it's like, this is the sixth time of the day. Right. And you're just running dry. Maybe that could be it, yeah. Uh, so I would say, how the hell can I come faster? Uh, come less often. Higher right. quality, less quantity. Also, are you using lube? Maybe some some, uh, some lubrication, some lubrication, some uh, baby oil, some Vaseline, some Jergens hand lotion. What is baby oil? Like, what is that? It's just like super slippery. I, mean, is, I don't know point? what it actually is, but what are you supposed to do with baby oil? Why does it oil baby your oil? baby? Oil? Yeah, is if your baby's too dry, use a baby oil. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be make be good for its skin. It's like makes the skin soft, like kind of like lotion. It's also weird because know. most oils are like. The word I don't think I've ever used it, baby oil for like whatever it was designated for. It's it, not to jerk off. Every other oil is, is the oil is what it's made out of. Like coconut oil is made out of coconuts or like canola mm -hmm. oil, vegetable oil. But baby oil is like not made out of. Wait. <gasps> what wait. the fuck is this bottle? <laughs> <I'm> sick <laughs> bastards. <laughs> you made me eat a baby. You shouldn't be eating the oil regardless. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, on we go. Yeah. You think people like this lightning round? I don't it's know. It's a little different. It's, it's a, a bonus different. Thursday. The questions are all, have all been pretty legit. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we would have answered how can I come faster. But it's I kind would of have wanted to. It's That's kind of funny. interesting to get to questions we wouldn't necessarily have gone to. Yeah. Maybe that could be a bonus Thursday theme. Oh, interesting. Uh, tweet at us. Let us know what you think about this lightning yeah, round. Tell us shit. Yet. Like it. Uh, 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 oh. This might not be a question. Hey, guys, I just want you to know that during 1950, two Rosenbergs, being Julius and Ethel, were convicted guilty of sharing nuclear secrets with the Soviets. Not to worry, because any arms race that America and Russia may have in the future, I'm sure that Dave would win. Hashtag curls before girls. I understand this email is entirely pointless. I just thought you should know. Peace out. Hmm. Did, has Dave ever said curls before girls? Because it does sound like something he'd say. But I can't remember ever hearing him. I can't remember hearing that either. It's pretty funny. 
See, sometimes the, the emails aren't even questions. They're just mm-hmm. tips, suggestions. How do you know that? Uh, all right. Uh, here's one from a dude from Canada. All right. Steve Nash writes, I'm in a bit of a complicated situation with my ex-girlfriend. Right off the bat. Seems like he should not be in any yeah. situation. What, what situation is um, is actually like simple with an ex girlfriend? Yeah, <laughs> don't be in a situation with your ex because it, it will be complicated. We were together for a few years in high school, but mutually decided that we would break up before we went to college because we knew how complicated it would be to either do long distance or go in with a pre-established relationship. So we decided to not tell each other which schools we were applying to, agree, and agreed to put some distance between us, allowing ourselves to experience other people comfortably and without the other's judgment however after i told her which college i was choosing to make uh i was sorry however after i told her which college i was choosing to make sure she didn't pick the same one she suddenly decided that she would go to school there too it being her third choice not her first like me and that she wouldn't change her mind now we both go there this isn't a huge problem i wasn't too mad about it but my issue is she wants to hang out all the time and be friends which is what we were trying to avoid in the first place at least so soon after the breakup and this isn't the worst part when we hang out she always makes moves on me and tells me how much she still loves me since our breakup was so mutual and pre-decided neither of our feelings were really hurt Essentially, we keep hooking up because she's a tempstress and I can't say no. (laughs) What do I do to help? Please, this has been going on for a fucking year and I can't tell her to stop because when I don't show interest in her, uh, uh, she thinks I hate her, which I don't. You didn't break up with your girlfriend, (laughs) so don't call her your ex. It's such a silly, weird situation. We broke up mutually, and she constantly confesses her love to me. We still hook up and go to the same school. Yeah, so that's not a breakup. It's almost like the breakup never happened. I you, think if you actually don't want to see her, you should make you make it clear on you your have no to break up. certain terms. You have to break up. That's Yet what again. it is. You break up. You can't be like halfway doing it. We're still friends. We go to the same school. We still hook up. Yeah. Because that's not being broken up. And it sounds like she it was not as mutual as you hoped it would be. Yeah, I don't think it was I don't think it was mutual to her. Right. I think she felt like she got dumped <laughs> and she's clawing her way back into your heart. It's one of those things where you felt bad, so it's like this is mutual, right? And she felt bad too. She doesn't want to be yeah. dumped. Like, yeah, it's mutual. No, yeah, you're totally right. Anyway, I do want to go to college with you. I want to hang out all the time and we will still hook up. And if you don't see me, you hate me. Uh yeah. Uh I can't tell her to stop because when I don't show interest, she thinks I hate her. That's a problem with someone that you're going out with. Yeah, uh, that's not something a friend says to a friend. Yeah, you don't think... That's not a friend problem. That's right. a girlfriend problem. That's like, you th- you hate me because you don't want to hook up with me is not an issue you have to deal with so with I an ex-girlfriend. Think, yeah, sadly, you just have to like let her think that you hate her for a little bit. It's, you could say, like, I don't hate you, but... And she'll be I confused. Don't. She'll say something like, how can you do this? Yeah, Where is she, this coming from? She, sure, I'm sure she's a temptress, and I'm sure she will try... To not break up with you, but you have to stay strong and break up with her and not be her friend either for a little bit. You Try can't it. go. You can't transition from girlfriend to friend immediately. You have to. Everybody has to hate each other for a period of time. Right. That's the way to get over someone. You can't be the guy that breaks her heart and consoles her. Yeah. They there can't is, be the same person. You are two pieces of bread, and you need to make a sandwich. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thoughts on which salami or luncheon meat she should use? I think it should be turkey. I really do think it should be a pastrami, like you said. Mm-hmm. You didn't actually say that? So we agree. <laughs> uh, onward? We still got about five minutes to go. Let's do it. Uh, another spam from a website called iPoll. Cool. You'll have to read that. Uh, ooh, this one's interesting. Help, a celebrity is hitting on me. Whoa. Interesting. Dope. Can we say who the celebrity is? Uh, I wonder if she even says it. Let's Let's give this lady a fake name. She's a freshman in Chicago. Tracy. Tracy McGrady writes, Hey guys, I'm a freshman in college from Chicago. Recently, one of my favorite comedians on YouTube slash movie stars added me on Snapchat. And after a few funny snaps I sent him, this alone was a dream come true for me, of course. But I didn't contact him again because I didn't want to seem like a fangirl. This is about you. Oh my God. (laughs) He sent me a message over chat and asked if we had met before he said i'd look so familiar as if we had met in another life and he hoped we could meet in real life he then followed me on instagram and liked a bunch of my pictures and told me how pretty i was and how kissable my lips looked oh here's the shitter 
He then said that he wanted to keep one of the pictures on my story forever, so he screenshotted it and asked if it was weird that he was zooming in and pretended to make out with a photo. At this point, I'm very confused, but flattered. I responded by saying, is it weird that I wish it was true? And he opened it, but he didn't respond. I'm sending you guys this email because I'm curious. Am I a fucking loser weirdo for saying that? Is this celeb a scumbag? Am I special or does he just use his popularity to try to get nudes from cute chicks? Should I try to talk to him again? Somehow I'm a little sad that he doesn't want to talk to me anymore. Oh, I wanted this to be I wanted to be his friend and make him laugh. You cool cats are internet comedians too. Do you see where he's coming from? You're the only ones I know that could help. Any advice or comforting words would be greatly appreciated. Much love, Tracy. It's so strange. So he went, he, from, was, he went from like creeping her out, she's like, ew, gross, to now she wants his now she does want the advance. Yeah, that what she said to him was the most flirtatious thing. I guess what he did first was very flirtatious. Kissable lips zooming in on the photo. I want to save this snap forever. Is it weird that I wish it was true? It was like very like forward. So it sounds like you just flirted back though. It wasn't like you went. No, you you didn't didn't say anything that turned him off. I'm sure you said exactly what he was hoping for. That's like what he wanted the entire time. Right. But the fact that he didn't respond is a little odd. Why would he just stop? I bet he did respond eventually. Just didn't look like I'm he's clearly hitting on you. I bet he does. If he's doing it to you, he does it to everybody. Yeah, you're there's not, no way that you're the only person on social media. If he's famous, that you're the only person that's hitting him up. Right. Uh, but she just wanted to be his friend. Well, uh, what about all these questions? Let's just tackle them one by one. Lightning okay. round, after all. Sure. Am I a fucking loser weirdo for saying that? No. Is the celeb a scumbag? Not entirely. Uh, am I special, or does he just use his popularity to try to get nudes from cute chicks? Both. She's special, and he uses popularity to get nudes from cute chicks. Yeah, I think she's special in her own right, but she's not the only person that he's doing this to. Uh, Should I try to talk to him again? Mm, Not if he doesn't respond. Yeah, not if he doesn't respond. And also go into it knowing that this is not like a true love thing. This isn't like some magical connection you have with a celebrity. He is doing this with a lot of people. Uh, Do you see where he's coming from? Yeah, I've definitely been there before, hitting on people over... Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're the only ones. Oh, that's it. That was it. Tracy. You think Tracy. we helped? Uh, yeah. I think... I, I mean, I don't want to throw this guy under the bus for being a little horn dog. That's... I, you know, as long as he's single and as long as he's not hurting anybody, it's fine. But mm-hmm. she shouldn't feel like, uh, whoa, this dude was in love with me and I said something and I fucked up and now he's not in love with any, anymore. He just thought you were hot. He probably still thinks you're hot, but I bet he's getting lots of messages from people. And that's the truth, Tracy. Uh, One last question. Sure. I am a boy in high school and I've never been a cool, but for the last month or so, I became a pimp and a cool. Toda. A Brad Pitt of my grade, if you will. My question is, should I keep this newfound power to myself or should I just fuck every hot girl in my grade? P.S. Every girl in my grade is willing to fuck me. Thank you. (laughs) So this is a good example of a question that we get where they're trying to be funny. It's not a real question. It doesn't mean anything. This guy actually, and unfortunately he was right, but not in the way he thought it was right. He thought we would either take this seriously and try to answer it or find it so funny that we would have to read it on the uh-huh. show. But we, we actually only read it because we read every single email in succession. Yeah, so don't... You sent it at the very right time. <laughs> Which was 12 hours ago at 5.59 in the morning. Uh, sometimes the questions will be false. Uh, we tried to do our best to answer only real questions, but unfortunately many of them are either incorrect, fake, uh, or repetitive. Like, oh, this girl's friend zoned me or, Mm -hmm. Hey, I want this girl to like me, but she doesn't. What can I I do? I can fuck anyone. Who should I fuck? Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, there's nothing to answer in this question. Should we try to find one? Like, can we hang out? Please. Uh, we do want to hang out with you. That's right. That's You're correct. You're a Brad Pitt. Uh, all right. Here's another one. Let's see if this one's worth axing or answering. There's a girl whom I work with that's been showing signs of attraction, but I've never had a girlfriend, and I don't really know if she just wants to be friends or if she wants to have a more personal relationship. She always tells me that she doesn't want me to leave when my shift is almost over and engages Snapchat conversations most of the time. Should I ask her out? I don't know what to do. I'm 18. Sounds like you could ask her out. Yeah. 
Uh, you don't really have a lot to lose. I think this uh, is another type of question we get where guys are like on the fence or they need convincing to do something that they probably already want to do. Like they want we right. It's, it's, you saw him coach us towards the answer. Yeah. She's, she always says this. She engages in Snapchat, and uh, she seems like she likes me. Should I ask her out? Do You, you just want us to say yes, right? Yeah. He and wants, the answer is yes. Or he wants, uh, like, ask, when you ask someone out, there's a fear of rejection. Like, what were you thinking? Why did you do that? But then it's like, I asked these guys, and they said yes. It seemed right. like a no-brainer. Yeah. I think you always you weigh the the signs in this case the signs i think are worth asking around you always ask out once if you've never asked them out yeah i think it's just like do i ask them out again we get that sometimes too it's like i asked her out she said no but now this this and this are happening should i ask ask her out out again again? the answer for that is always no (laughs) never ask out twice like i see these three signs should i ask her out the answer is always yes because even if she says no it's fine you like still got the signs right you got the signs and you opened, opened up, up your eyes, eyes you, you got, got the signs. signs. <laughs> uh, that's it. I think we answered more questions on this show than in the past, what, four or five episodes yeah. combined. Ooh. We didn't get deep, but we definitely scraped the surface of a lot. Uh, let us know what you think. If you have your own questions, uh, your own theme song submissions, send them all to show at gmail.com. The opening one was written by Gus Rachels. This closing one was by Soph and Amalia. Uh, which headgum p- episode should we put at the end of this to tease Ooh. people? Uh, 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 a little uh, bit uh, of uh, uh, Black Men Can't Jump. Uh, uh, all right, let's find uh, an intriguing part of Black Men Can't Jump, which is a, a podcast with three comedians talking about black people's role in Hollywood. Very interesting, very intriguing. Stick around for that. Uh, and again, you can listen to all the HeadGum podcasts at HeadGum.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back on Monday. Peace. My mom told me to roll my own socks. I got a problem. I got a problem. My dad told me to mow the lawn. I got a problem. I got a problem. I saw my mom sleeping with my uncle. I got a problem. funny because the first time you see eddie in the movie he's not cracking jokes it's like it's establishing that like this dude is badass yeah. you know what i'm saying i mean like, i think his, his, oh, i mean he's i mean he's, no well, yeah i think the energy I mean, of him is still very comical i mean it is it's but it's like to me funny. it's like but when you see him though it's like this isn't like when i first saw him and okay. it's like he's undercover whatever yeah it's like this is just a this is just a, a badass cop to right. me it wasn't like some jokey dude who is going to be stringing one line or starting right. the whole movie? The same, in the, no. The, like, uh, Rush Hour starts the same way. Yes. yes. Rush Hour starts the same way with, like, he's undercover, you know, and he's. You know, like, and it's like, that's what's happening, right? But it starts the same way, but. But I think like, no, to- no, no, no. Go back and do <laughs> do your impression of a fast talking. <laughs> Chris okay, Tucker. so so Rush Hour starts and it's. This is terrible. Okay. That's the worst thing um, ever. So I wasn't trying to actually do, but you know what I mean. He's like, he's like <laughs> oh, man. Okay, right. That's how it starts. Man, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's do you understand the word that coming out of my Mickey mouth? Mickey Mouse, Chris Tucker. Um, <laughs> But uh, it starts that way. But like to to your point, something you were saying, Jira, is is how like in Rush Hour, we don't see we don't see Chris Tucker's character actually be smart, but we get to see Eddie Murphy's yeah. character be smart. <laughs> like that's how it's st- like it starts with him being a- actually a very believable kind of like drug dealer type. Yeah, you know, and like. I think that that's what's great. That's what sort of feels- even like his thing with the cops and him being like, oh, like, like he doesn't yeah. panic. He's just like, you know what happens to the officer? Like it just shut right. down. It just shut down. Like, yeah. Yeah. and like he's he is clearly like that fast talking person who's like tries to talk his way out of everything. But there is like an intelligence to the to the like you know lies that he's like coming up with. Basically, yeah. see to me that was the beauty of it because it was like, and that's something that I feel like doesn't happen a lot now. Just with movies in general especially if it's like a comedian in like an action type of role it's like you don't establish that this person is more than just being funny yeah. and in that movie they went out of their way to show you on multiple occasions like oh this dude understood that the coffee grounds 
probably means there's drugs in this box. <laughs> but I would like to bring up the fact that as great the, as the movie was, he still did not get the attractive white girl. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>